Hello and welcome back to another episode of Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that you can merge nodes and detach elements in Oasis Primer? Today I'm going to show you the merging and detach capabilities, essentially the opposite of merging, in Oasis Primer. Now there are various reasons why you might want to use these tools. One might be because you've imported a mesh from some external meshing software and maybe there's some errors, so some of the nodes weren't attached correctly and there are some free edges inside the mesh. And so you need to attach them and that's where merging comes uh, into play. Alternatively, you might have actually created separate um, surfaces or meshes and you need to combine them and you can merge them if the nodes are coincident rather than needing to use tied contacts or node overdue bodies. And then similarly in Primer, you might have actually used the Orient tools to translate parts of a model and copy some shells and beams or whatever it is. And you need to merge any coincident nodes together to kind of stitch or glue the model back together. So that's where merging comes into play. And then detaching is used when, say, you have a mesh and you need to kind of take some shells out of that mesh without bringing all the uh, remaining nodes with you. So you detach those elements and then when they're detached, you can move them uh, because new nodes are created. So it's not moving the original nodes. OK, so I have um, an example model here with uh, these three meshes. You'll have seen it before. This is the crush tube example. And I'm going to use this to demonstrate the merging capabilities. So first of all, we look at the model and we don't really see anything that necessarily needs to be merged. But actually, if we hold down the control button and then shift as well, we can see that there are these squares um, that are visible. And these are representing essentially free edges. And because they're free edges, that means that the nodes aren't merged together. So that's quite a nice way you can visualize them by holding down control and then shift. If you press the Y button a couple of times, you'll actually be able to see those free edges as well drawn and control then uh, highlights them and then shift um, colors them in as well. So to access the merging tool, you need to click on remove and then merge. There are also other tools here, delete and clean up. Delete does what it says, it deletes any entities in the model and then clean up is a really nice way of cleaning up your model. Say you've got some empty parts and sets or things like that, the cleanup tool is pretty handy at cleaning them up and helping keep your model nice and neat. So we need to access the merge tool here and then the first thing we need to do is select the nodes that we want to merge. So we can do various selections, the entire model based on entities, nodes, parts, shells, for this one, I'm just going to select part and pick that whole part there. We can see that those areas that need to be merged are actually highlighted for us in this display mode, which is quite nice. So we'll then finish. And then before we merge, I'd always recommend pressing the preview merge button. And that not only plots with these uh, red X's uh, on the screen to show you where the merges will take place, but also there's a output here telling me that there are 20 nodes that could potentially be merged. So that just gives me a bit of a preview of what would happen when I click merge. So before I merge, I'm just gonna talk through some of the options we have available to us. So the merging will by default be performed with the lowest node label. That's because when you merge two nodes together, it has to pick one of the nodes to keep and the other one it disregards uh, in that merge. So the lowest node label is chosen. And then similarly, the lowest node label coordinate is also used. We have the option of changing both of these to the highest node label. In this case, this would use the highest node coordinate, or we can also use the average position, which might be useful if you want to take the midpoint between the two of them. So I'm gonna leave those default options. And in most cases, this is probably what you'll want to do because the lowest node label is probably the most meaningful one and it keeps your node range uh, smaller. And then most of the time your coordinates are actually coincident. So it doesn't really matter which of these three options you pick because the outcome will be identical. There's also the ability to choose the merge tolerance. So if we set something really, really small, then it will only merge things that are very close together. Alternatively, you, you could set this quite a large number, but then we risk merging things we didn't intend to over a larger range. So typically, I'd recommend keeping this number pretty small, definitely smaller than the kind of element dimension or the smallest dimension that we have of the elements, because otherwise the nodes could merge 
across multiple elements, which might not be intended. And then lastly, we have the options of selecting the more and the less cautious options for how the merge is performed. The more cautious option is essentially an option which will only merge things when there's no ambiguity and the less cautious option will merge everything. So ambiguity might arise when you've got things like nodal rigid bodies and beams. And if you're not totally sure, you can click the question mark here and it'll explain with a few examples what is meant by the more and less cautious options. I'll also demonstrate that in a, a second. So I'm happy with my merge and all I need to now do is click apply and then my merge has been performed and it tells me that I've merged 28 nodes here. I can undo that merge if I like to, and those are restored, but then I would now need to reselect my nodes. So this time I could just select with nodes highlighting over here, and notice I've missed out the ones at this end. So when I click finish and preview, it's only going to show the nodes in the zone that I've highlighted, and then I can click apply. Okay, now I'm going to show you the detach tool. If we go into mesh tools and then click on detach, and then shells, we have the ability of detaching shells within a mesh. So I'll just change the view to top down and I'm gonna select um, a whole zone here. And what this is gonna do is create a detached mesh at this particular point here. So when I click apply, we'll see a gray line appear, which we have there. Control shift should might show that more clearly. And that means that all of the elements on this portion are in one zone and they are all attached together. And the elements on the other side are attached together, but they aren't attached across the boundary. So if we came back to the remove and then the merge option and we selected um, some nodes across that zone here and finish and preview, we can see that it will try and re-merge those nodes on that boundary. So I'm not going to do that just now. What I'm actually going to do is going to create a uh, constrained nodal rigid body. And I'm just going to create that with the default options. So if I press control and shift, I can see where I need to select. And then I can zoom in, see where I need to select, and then highlight that zone and create a nodal rigid body. And now back to the merging tool. I've already selected those nodes so I can sketch them and I preview merge, it won't let me. Whereas if I preview merge this time, it will. And so that shows you the difference between the more and the less cautious option. Is that in the more cautious option, it's, it can see that the nodal rigid body is actually already tying them together and it's grabbing them so it's not going to merge them. Whereas the less cautious option can see that the nodes are coincident and so it's going to merge them if I choose to do that in which case it will merge them. It will keep the nodal rigid body there, but it will remove the kind of extra node. And in the case that I've got here, it will just pick the lowest node for me. Okay, so that was detaching an entire region, but now I can also show you how you detach just individual elements. So if I click individual elements like this, or even like a kind of patchwork of them, it will detach around the perimeter of the selected zones. I can even select some on the side as well here. And then if I click apply, it shows me that it's created some new shells and pressing Y a few times, we can see that we've detached those elements and created those zones. And now I'm gonna show you the last feature of the merge tool. So I was showing you the selection where we select some nodes and then merge them, but you can also merge based on the plane. So if you click on merge nodes on plane, and then we need to pick a plane. So let's pick the Z plane and then also pick a node which represents the coordinate of that plane. If I sketch selected, it will show me all of these nodes that are selected. And notice how it's missing out some of these zones and that's because of the tolerance set here. So this is set to 0 0.1. If we set that tolerance to let's say one and sketch selected, we pick up more of those nodes. And if we went to something much bigger, you would pick up all the nodes in kind of a, a greater depth. The merge on plane has two tolerances to set. The first one is to set the tolerance of the nodes that are out of plane that it will consider. So that's all the ones that we can see currently sketched. And then the second one is to consider the tolerance of actually merging a node to another node. So only nodes within kind of a circle or a sphere of 0 0.1 radius will actually be merged together. So I'm going to set this back to 0 0.1 and then I'm going to preview merge. It's going to merge all of these nodes here, but it's not going to merge the nodes at this particular point here because they're out with the tolerance. I'm going to click apply 
and then now we can see it's merged those nodes there. Finally, if I just show you the uh, delete option from the remove pane, so let's delete these shells. And this is might be an example where we want to kind of get rid of this crumple zone um, as kind of a, an initial imperfection for the crust tube. So I've selected these six rows of elements and I'm going to delete them all, the shells and the nodes. And now I'm going to use the orient tool And I'm going to grab these shells here and I'm going to copy them on and I'm going to copy it six times and I'll use the vector represented by the element side and I only want to do it in the X direction so I have actually picked two that are on the same uh, Z plane so that's fine but it's nice to uh, know that you can also kind of only choose specific components so I've got a copy on and my options, I'll just check whether it's going to be in the same part or a new part. So I'll pick it in the same part and then end the options and apply. Now we've copied and pasted those shells six times here, but those won't actually be merged together. So if we do control and then shift, we can see the kind of banding there of those elements that have been created. And so each kind of ring of shells is merged, but not merged to the neighbor. So if we come back to the remove tool and then merge, and then we, let's say, select uh, the part here and finish, we can preview that merge and then apply. And we've merged that all together. So that was just a quick overview of the merging capabilities, as well as showing you how you can use detaching to detach a zone and specific elements as well. The same applies to things like beams and merging works much the same, except for it tends to be one dimensional. So you can use the merging tool to help you fix errors with your meshes, as well as to construct models and kind of glue them together. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks for listening to this top tip and I'll see you at the next one.